Let's talk about the Jeep Wrangler. It's got a bit of a mixed reputation for being reliable, but guess what? It's still a hotshot among SUVs, snagging the second spot for Jeep in the US. Today, we're digging into why that is. Plus, we'll check out the 2024 Jeep Wrangler, pit it against the Ford Bronco and Toyota Land Cruiser, and figure out why Jeep's overall sales took a 30% nosedive in the last four years. There's some solid research behind this, so keep watching this video. We've crunched the numbers and untangled the story of Jeep's ups and downs, so don't miss out. Also, if you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. A recent research study delved into the demographic profile of Jeep Wrangler owners, revealing interesting insights. Approximately 72% of Wrangler owners are male with an average annual salary of around $115,000. Notably, 90% of them have children, and an impressive 94% own a home, surpassing the general home ownership rate of about 65% in the United States. The Wrangler's popularity is underscored by the milestone of 5 million units sold, a feat celebrated by Stellantis in September. The 5 millionth Wrangler, a 2023 4 XE Rubicon 20th Anniversary Edition in Earl Grey Hue, boasted a powerful 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque, and a 21-mile electric range. This landmark vehicle found its home with a buyer in New Jersey who received a substantial lifetime Jeep Wave customer care package as part of the celebration. Jeep proudly claims that over 80% of all Wranglers sold are still operational today. Despite its widespread appeal, the Wrangler doesn't escape criticism for reliability issues and a history of recalls. The rugged design, originally crafted for off-road adventures in diverse weather conditions, attracts a broad spectrum of drivers, even those who seldom venture off the beaten path. Interestingly, the Wrangler's appeal extends beyond its intended purpose, resonating with individuals who never take their vehicles off-road. However, this versatility comes at a cost. Common complaints from Wrangler owners revolve around its transmission and suspension, ill-suited for everyday city driving. The vehicle's design, particularly its suspension setup, indicates a focus on off-road performance rather than smooth highway driving, while customization options, such as larger tires, exist to enhance city performance. Many urban owners opt not to modify their Wranglers. The Wrangler's challenges become more apparent when considering issues like poor quality components and loose panels in the utilitarian interior. These factors contribute to the vehicle developing a reputation for instability, subpar quality, and occasional unreliability. Beyond the transmission and suspension issues, some Wrangler owners report problems with electronics, fuel pumps, transmissions, and axles. Notably, many of these complaints stem from modifications made to the vehicle by owners. Additionally, some drivers express concerns about the Wrangler's tendency to wobble and shake, a characteristic attributed more to its design than to underlying mechanical issues. Considering safety, it becomes evident that the Wrangler wasn't engineered as a top-tier city driving vehicle. Consequently, its safety rating may not rival that of vehicles designed with urban commuting in mind. While some drivers accept this compromise, others may question the vehicle's safety credentials. In terms of maintenance costs, a survey reveals that the average annual expense for repairing and maintaining a Jeep Wrangler is $694, slightly surpassing the overall average for all vehicle models, which stands at $652. Moreover, the study notes a 16% probability of a severe repair for the Wrangler compared to the 12% average for other vehicle models. Shifting focus from the Wrangler to the broader Jeep brand, it's worth acknowledging the brand's rich history. Jeep has been a stalwart presence in the automotive industry for almost a century, celebrating its 80th year this year. Speculation about the brand's future trajectory is a subject of interest, with opinions varying based on individual perspectives and industry analyses. Jeep's historical association with SUVs and off-road adventures has been fundamental, earning it the status of the original SUV. In the landscape of American car brands, Jeep was once among the first names that came to mind. However, a shift in the American perspective has occurred over the years, and Jeep, now under Stellantis ownership, has witnessed a decline in sales. More Jeeps are accumulating in lots, and brand loyalty is waning, with a diminishing cult following prompting previous enthusiasts to explore alternative car brands. Examining the shift in Jeep's consumer base reveals a trend. In 2019, 47% of Jeep owners traded their vehicles for another Jeep, but this figure dropped to 43% in the first half of the current year. Notably, 
a substantial portion of this 43% opted for another Stellantis vehicle, indicating a degree of internal brand loyalty. Jeep's peak performance was recorded five years ago in 2018 when it sold over 972,000 vehicles. However, since then, sales have steadily declined. With only 684,000 vehicles sold in 2022, a notable 30% decrease in just four years. While high vehicle inventory isn't necessarily a negative indicator, it can become a disadvantage, as observed in Jeep's case. In June, Jeep's lot had a 77-day supply, surpassing the national average of 53 days. Comparatively, other major automakers like Ford, GMC, and Chevy had 76, 63, and 50 days of supply, respectively. Notably, Hyundai, Honda, and Toyota maintained lower inventory levels with 49, 28, and 27 days of supply, emphasizing the challenges Jeep faces in managing its inventory. Adding to Jeep's challenges, despite offering a substantial incentive of nearly $3,300 per vehicle, the impact on reducing Jeep's excess inventory was limited. This situation unfolds against the backdrop of industry-wide supply and logistics constraints. Earlier this year, Jeep made the strategic decision to halt Cherokee production in favor of prioritizing the Jeep Wrangler. Unfortunately, the Grand Wagoneer faced a similar fate, experiencing a shortfall in the first half of the year. Compounding these issues, Jeep factories are now operating seven days a week in a critical status. Even as Jeep geared up for the Wrangler refresh, production faced hurdles, acknowledged by Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares, who expressed a commitment to addressing internal operational challenges. Despite these operational challenges, stricter emissions regulations prompted Stellantis to cease allocating some of its popular gas-powered Jeeps in 14 states, reflecting the broader impact of evolving regulatory landscapes on the automotive industry. Returning to the focal point, the 2024 Jeep Wrangler made its official debut in April. While adhering to the established framework, with no changes to the frame and minor adjustments to the body for enhanced crash safety, the 2024 model introduces notable updates. These include a Dana 44 HD full flow rear axle, the availability of factory-installed winches on Rubicon trims, two new wheel designs, and a revised front fascia. The 2024 Jeep Wrangler lineup encompasses various trims, including Sport, Sport S, Willys, Sahara, Rubicon, Rubicon X, and Rubicon 392, showing a commitment to offering diverse options to cater to different preferences in the market. In comparing the 2024 Jeep Wrangler to its counterparts, such as the 2024 Ford Bronco and the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Wrangler offers a diverse range of engine options. Choices include a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder, a naturally aspirated 3.6-liter V6, a plug-in hybrid utilizing the Turbo 4, and an iron block 6-liter V8. The potent 6.4-liter V8 in the Wrangler 392 delivers an impressive 470 horsepower and nearly 500 pound-feet of torque, providing a robust driving experience. Notably, the 4XE variant combines electric and combustion power, offering 21 miles of EV driving and 49 MPG combined fuel economy, making it an attractive option for budget-conscious consumers. The pricing spectrum for the 2024 Jeep Wrangler spans from the base sport trim at $36,900 to the range-topping Rubicon, $392 at $90,500. The 4XE powertrain introduces additional choices, with the base Sport X starting at $49,990 and the highest 4XE trim, the Rubicon X, commencing at $72,290. Turning to the 2024 Ford Bronco, Ford's response to the Wrangler's dominance, it presents a competitive offering with two- and four-door configurations, optional manual and four-wheel drive, and a range of engine choices. Even the basic Bronco features a turbocharged inline-four with 300 horsepower and a 10-speed automatic or an available 7-speed manual transmission. Further options include a 330-horsepower twin-turbo V6. The 2024 Bronco boasts nine trims, with the base Big Bend starting at $39,100 and the highest trim at $89,300. As for the Toyota Land Cruiser, undergoing a downsizing to a medium-sized SUV, its starting price is expected in the mid-50S range. Details on the new model are still emerging, 
creating anticipation for further insights into its features and performance. Given this overview, the choice among these SUVs depends on individual preferences, needs, and budget considerations. If you've owned or driven a Jeep or a Jeep Wrangler, your insights into its reliability would be valuable. Feel free to share your experiences in the comments below. If you appreciate this information, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated.